The Avengers is a top tier film. In fact, it was my favorite of the MCU until Age of Ultron came along. Let's not kill ourselves, Adam. The original is king, no doubt. Kim and Francis from What the Flick have stopped by to feud Marvel films. This is an unfair fight though, as there's one of me and only two of them. Oh, uh, we'll see you worrying about making excuses already. Civil War has come early. It's Avengers versus Avengers Age of Ultron on Movie Feud. The large majority of the cast is the same, so let's focus on how well they were utilized in each of these movies. Look, it was really clear what they were supposed to do in the original Avengers. They need to unite, have these different personalities come together for a greater good. Very clear arc. I cannot figure out what the arc of the characters is in Avengers Age of Ultron, and I can't even tell who the main character is. It's very convoluted. You say it's messy and convoluted, I say it's well-versed. We get fantastic scenes from all of our Avengers from a Hulk versus the Hulk buster to Thor going toe to toe with Ultron. And then there's Jeremy Renner as Hawkeye who gets a little bit of time focused to him on the farm. We spent probably way too much time on that farm that could have been spent otherwise fleshing out the more important characters. Newcomers Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch, who I'm afraid I'm in love with now, fit in perfectly into the universe. I touched upon Ultron, but let me say this. He was a great, badass follow-up to Loki. James Spader gives Tom Hardy a run for his money in the voice acting department. First I break your back, then I break your soul. And after I turn the Avengers to ash, then you have my permission to die. My bane. Loki is the better villain. Yes. Uh, Tom Hiddleston really brings it. He is undoubtedly the best villain in a Marvel Cinematic Universe. Ultron is pretty much a mirror of Tony Stark's personality, so when they argue with each other, it's basically pointless. You're pointless! Sorry, sorry. Come on, Adam. Be professional. What is a good point about the first one, I have to say, Adam, is that maybe this goes to your advantage as well, is that in the first one, we don't really need to build up the character development of the villain, because we already know who Loki is, so you're just kind of thrown in to, to know what his, his problem is and what he's going to achieve, whereas with Ultron, because he's not been introduced in the Avengers movies before, you have to kind of build his character up and get people to understand him. And when we got there, Loki was a clear threat. Yeah. Ultron didn't feel like a threat to me. Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch were doing much more damage than him. Were Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver more of a threat? Sure. But guess what? They were working for Ultron, thereby making him the quintessential last guy in a video game, which is even more badass and dangerous. Yes, Loki's a fun villain, but more threatening than Ultron? No, 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 no. What did he do, actually? Most of the time, he sits back and watches because he can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any of the Avengers. Look what happened when he pissed off the Hulk. We get a clip on that, Campton? Nobody works here. I mean, obviously you're going to go to the love story between the Hulk and Black Widow. It was just so forced. It didn't I can't, I can't help feel but natural. No. The chemistry wasn't... You didn't feel no, it. I didn't what feel is it. this? There was no love there. I didn't feel the love. And from the first scene when they catch eyes and Hulk's in Hulk form, obviously, and he looks at her and you're kind of thinking, oh, Jesus. Was it awkward and forced? Yes. Oh, I'm not arguing this point. Let's move on to story. The story of Avengers is about a magical being who comes to Earth in order to enslave the human race. He has a staff that can control people with, and yet he only uses it on the most worthless ones. The story has more holes than a truck stop bathroom stall. The same can be said for the sequel, but it's far more entertaining. The character interaction in the second one, it, there, were, there was more on-screen chemistry and more fluidity in the party scenes mm. than there wasn't anything else, especially with the action scenes. It was like they're all off doing their own thing, but they weren't coming together as they did in the first one. Well, you know why you go to superhero movies? Why? For the party For the parties. But, yeah. I mean, part, to be fair, partying with superheroes would be fun. I think I speak for many critics who, who viewed this movie, is that it would not be surprising if at the start of uh, Age of Ultron, if they said, next week on the Avengers, because it seemed like it was just one big prolonged trailer for the many more movies that are going to come. Yes, we're waiting for Infinity War. We're yes. waiting for Captain America and the Civil War. We're, we're waiting we're, for something more in this whole thing. It's like the penultimate episode of any TV show, but it's a whole movie <laughs> of that. I've been hearing these complaints from critics for a while now, but honestly, what did it do that the other Marvel films don't? They all have some sort of tie into a future film. That's not new. And it didn't hammer it down our throats like Iron Man 2 did. You want to complain about villains not being fleshed out? Take a look back at Loki. Yes, he's perfectly fine, but the army that he amassed that the Avengers fight for the last hour, who were they? They had like maybe two minutes of uh, backstory. 
if you want to even call it that. At least in the sequel, when they're fighting waves of disposable bad guys, they're essentially just fighting Ultron himself. Avengers 1 has plenty of big budget effects, there's no denying that, and it looks great still, but let's think about another movie that came out around that exact same time, Transformers 3. The end fights are very similar. Age of Ultron goes in a different direction, gives us unique settings and environments, more creative fights, and it's just a beauty to look at. If you take away the first Avengers and you just look at the second one, the effects are going to be mind-blowing and fantastic. But just how significant the first movie was, there's nothing that can hold a light to it. Especially that final fight sequence in the third quarter of it, you're just mind-blown by the effects there. So there's nothing that you can even do, even if your effects are, are superior and you start adding more to the whole sequence, it's still not going to compare to the first one because it's the first time we've really seen it. It was cool how Ultron uh, kept upgrading himself over time. I wish we could have seen that on screen instead of him just coming back and being like, I'm better now. <laughs> but did you really want to see that? Really? Some things can be assumed to keep the audience from getting bored out of their mind. I mean, what's next? Do we need to know how uh, the Avengers are getting dressed in the morning? How did, how did Black Widow get in that outfit? Did she roll out of bed and just magically put it on? Or do we see her? Put on her pants, put on her bra and her shirt, look in the mirror at herself, brush her hair, put on her makeup, talk sexy to me. I see you, Black Widow. I see you. Oh my god. Okay, let's move on. You put up a good argument, Adam, but the original Reign Supreme, there's no comparison. It's still uh, one of the, the number one most watched movies in, in terms of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And the first one had Scarlett Johansson. The second one also had Scarlett Johansson. But well, why are we even arguing? Both have got Scarlett Johansson. Both are awesome. Well, there you have it. Two Avengers films go head to head. Now it's up to you to decide the winner. Like the video, comment, subscribe, and of course, vote. You can also find me on Patreon at patreon.com slash nation if you like what I'm doing with this show and support me there. I want to thank What The Flick for coming over, even though you guys just got your asses handed to you. Why don't you guys subscribe to them too, if nothing other than because you feel bad. So Adam, I'm afraid, case closed. From Francis and Kim here at What The Flick, uh, make sure to come over and check out most of our movie reviews. Uh, we discuss television and film reviews. And also, Adam, thank you so much for having us on. You're awesome, even though you didn't win this. It was fun beating show. you. It was fun beating you. More than just reviews, this is Movie Feuds. What's the lack of surprises again. in this? I mean, we did see people from a lot of movies oh we've seen God. before, but we've also been teased with a trailer that had Claudia Kim. Claudia Kim was oh not in God, this. She just... could have been maybe someone from Black Panther, who, by the way... It's over!